Hello truth seekers and welcome back to our channel where we unveil the shocking truth behind the glamorous world of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. Alrighty now folks, your favorite neighborhood royal commentator here coming at you with some piping hot tea about our favorite Z-list social climber trying to claw her way back into relevance. Let me tell you, when I saw this news about Patrick Adams and the Suits podcast situation, I nearly dropped my phone. But before we dive into this deliciously awkward situation, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe if you love authentic royals like our precious Princess of Wales, Catherine, and can't stand calculated social climbers. But before we delve into further discussion, if you haven't subscribed, I mean, come on guys, what are you waiting for? Hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell ASAP. So now, my dear royal watchers, let's break down this absolutely fascinating development that proves what we've been saying all along. Patrick Adams, Meghan's former co-star from her acting days, you know, before she decided to try becoming Hollywood royalty, is launching this new podcast called Sidebar, a Suits Watch podcast, with Sarah Rafferty. And oh my goodness, the way this is playing out is just chef's kiss perfect. Let's read between the lines here, shall we? Patrick gave this very interesting interview to The Hollywood Reporter, and the way he handled questions about Meghan was just raised his eyebrows significantly. Well, let's just say it speaks volumes about how her former friends really feel about her now. You see, when Patrick says they've reached out to everybody, notice how he doesn't specifically mention Meghan? Eh, that's not an accident, my friends. In Hollywood speak, that's what we call a polite brush off. Sure, he mentions she sent a lovely text message, but doesn't it feel a bit forced? Like when you run into that one relative at a family gathering who's always causing drama, and you have to be polite, but really you want to run in the opposite direction. And here's where it gets really interesting, my royal watchers. Remember the Golden Globes reunion? Where was Megan? Nowhere to be found. And then Gina Torres drops this absolute truth bomb. We don't have her number, we just don't. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the tea that's being spilled here? These were people she worked with for years. People she claimed were like family to her and they don't even have her phone number anymore. Let's be real here, this is a classic Megan move. The woman who ghosted her entire family except when she needed them for publicity, who discarded friends faster than last season's designer handbags, who managed to drive a wedge between Harry and his actual family. And now we're supposed to believe she's going to come back and play happy families with her old suits cast. Poor Harry. Remember when he was the cheeky, beloved prince who brought so much joy to the royal family? Now he's just following around behind his wife, carrying her purse and looking increasingly uncomfortable. It's like watching a sad puppet show, isn't it? But let's contrast this with our beloved Princess Catherine and William. Now, those are real royals. Look at how they handle themselves with grace, dignity, and genuine commitment to service. Catherine, even while dealing with her health challenges, has shown more class and dignity than Meghan could muster in a lifetime of acting lessons. And speaking of acting, isn't it interesting how desperate Meghan seems to be to get back into Hollywood? First, the failed Spotify deal. Remember that disaster? Now, this obvious attempt to piggyback on her former castmate's success, but here's the thing, my dear viewers. Hollywood isn't buying what she's selling anymore. The evidence is right there in Patrick Adams' diplomatic but distant response. That's Hollywood's way of saying thanks, but no thanks. Because let's face it, what does Megan bring to the table now? A trail of burned bridges? A reputation for being difficult? and a tendency to throw anyone close to her under the bus the moment it serves her purpose. Remember how she treated her father, her sister, the entire royal family, and now we're seeing the same pattern with her former castmates. They're being polite because that's what professionals do, but they're keeping her at arm's length, and can you blame them? Let's talk about that Spotify deal for a moment. 12 episodes of Archetypes, which was basically just Megan talking about herself under the guise of discussing women's issues. And then poof, deal terminated. But of course her PR team tried to spin it as a mutual agreement. And now when her former colleagues are creating something new and exciting, something that could actually be successful, suddenly Megan's interested. How convenient. But. Notice how carefully Patrick Adams worded everything. That's what happens when you've learned your lesson about getting too close to someone who sees relationships as networking opportunities. 
My sources tell me, and remember, I've been covering the royals for years, that this is part of a larger pattern. Meghan's Hollywood comeback attempts have been hitting wall after wall. The industry hasn't forgotten how she treated people on her way up, and they certainly haven't forgotten how she's treated people since becoming the Duchess of Sussex. And poor Harry. Every time I see him now, he looks more and more lost. Remember the happy, confident prince who used to make everyone laugh? The one who was so close to William and Catherine? Now he's reduced to making random Netflix appearances and backing up whatever narrative Meghan's pushing that week. But here's what really gets me, my royal watchers. While Meghan's out there trying to force her way back into Hollywood, desperately seeking the spotlight, look at what real royalty is doing. William and Catherine continue to serve with dignity, grace, and genuine commitment to their causes. They don't need a podcast appearance or Netflix deals to make a difference. And let's talk about class for a moment. When Catherine needed to take time for her health, how did she handle it? With dignity and privacy, no drama, no leaks to the press, no attempting to monetize her situation. That's what real royalty looks like. Meanwhile, Meghan can't even maintain relationships with people who worked with her for seven years on Suits. Think about that. These people spent more time with her than the royal family did, and even they're keeping their distance now. The way Patrick Adams handled the situation is actually quite masterful, when you think about it. He's being professional, not burning any bridges, but also not giving Meghan any real opening to insert herself into this project. That's someone who's learned from experience, my friends. And isn't it interesting how different this is from the Suits cast, how they used to talk about her? Remember all those gushing interviews around the royal wedding? But now, we don't have her number. That's Hollywood code for a we've seen behind the curtain and we're not interested in a repeat performance. Let's be honest, this is exactly what happens when you treat relationships as stepping stones rather than genuine connections. People eventually wise up. They might be polite about it, they might couch on it in diplomatic language, but the message is clear. Nobody's interested in being part of the Megan show anymore. And can we talk about the timing? Just when Suits is having its amazing renaissance on Netflix, suddenly Megan's interested in reconnecting. How convenient. But Patrick Adams and the rest of the cast seem to have learned their lesson about getting pulled into her orbit. To my lovely royal watchers who've been with me on this journey, watching this whole saga unfold, doesn't this just confirm everything we've been saying? The pattern is so clear. Use people until they're no longer useful, discard them, and then try to reconnect when you need something from them again. But Hollywood isn't buying it anymore. The royal family isn't buying it anymore, and judging by Patrick Adams' very diplomatic but clear response, her former colleagues aren't buying it anymore. And you know what? Good for them. It's about time people started seeing through the act. Because while Meghan's out there trying to force her way back into relevance, real royals like William and Catherine continue to serve with dignity, class, and genuine commitment to their causes. Speaking of Catherine, can we just take a moment to appreciate how she handled herself during her recovery? That's real grace under pressure. That's real royalty, not these desperate attempts to stay in the spotlight that we're seeing from certain others. You know, it's actually quite sad when you think about it. Megan had everything, a successful acting career, genuine friends, and then the incredible opportunity to be part of the British royal family. But apparently none of that was enough if she couldn't be the center of attention. And now, well, this podcast situation pretty much says it all, doesn't it? When even your former co-stars are finding diplomatic ways to keep their distance, maybe it's time for some self-reflection. But my dear royal watchers, what do you think about all this? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Are you surprised by Patrick Adams' diplomatic dodge? Do you think Meghan will eventually make an appearance on the podcast? And how long before Harry realizes what's really going on? Don't forget to like this video, hit subscribe, and ring that bell to stay updated on the latest royalty. And a special shout out to all my viewers who have been here since the beginning, watching this whole saga unfold. You guys called it from day one. So what do you think about this news, guys? Please share your thoughts in the comments and let me know what you think. Until then, my fellow royal watchers, keep your eyes peeled, your ears open, and your skepticism firmly in place. Because in the world of royal watching, the truth is often stranger than fiction. And the fiction is pretty darn strange to begin with. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Bye for now.